Welcome to those who are here in person and those who are joining us online. We are continuing with a theme for the whole fall, a theme that the whole church is looking at, the story of Joseph. And so as we read a bit week by week, we're learning more about Joseph's story and our story. And today's story is told to us by another Joe from St. Paul. Every week we've had a different Joe come and tell us the story. Today is Miss Joanne Strunk. So welcome to this new Joe to be here today. She's going to read another part of the story. I'll let her get to the, to the page. And just a reminder that the last time we read the story of Joseph, we left off at the famine part, the part where there was going to be a time when there was not enough food. But before that, there would be a time when there was. There was even plenty extra food. So during the time when there was enough, they stored it up and saved it for the time when there would not be enough. And now the brothers are coming to Joseph, who's in charge of all this food distribution, to ask for some food. But they don't know it's Joseph. So take it away, our Joe. After seven years, there was a famine, just as God had said. But Joseph had saved plenty of food to share. Hungry people with rumbling tummies came from far and wide, looking for something to eat. Even Joseph's brothers came. May we please have some grain, asked the brothers. They didn't recognize Joseph, but Joseph recognized them. Joseph longed to hug his brothers, but he had to be sure that their hearts were no longer filled with anger and hatred. So he played a trick on them. He hid a silver cup in Benjamin's bag. Then he gave each brother a big bag of food. As the brothers turned to leave, Joseph cried, guards, search these men. Of course the, the guards found the silver cup. Your brother is a thief, cried Joseph. He must stay here and be my slave. The older brothers fell to their knees and bowed down before Joseph. Take one of us instead, they begged. Benjamin is our father's favorite. He has already lost one favorite son. Please don't take another. It would break his heart. At once, Joseph knew that his brothers had changed. At once, Joseph knew that his brothers had changed. Remember, when the brothers first come, they don't recognize Joseph. They don't know where Joseph is, and they weren't expecting to ever see him again, and he does not look the way that they thought he might. He's now in charge. And so, Joseph plays this trick to see has his brothers changed? Are they still the way that Joseph remembers them? Well, back here to the part where they don't recognize their brother. This makes me think of something that's coming up, a time when we too might be hard to recognize, a time when we might be dressed up for, let's say, Halloween. And it can be hard to recognize people when they're wearing different clothes than we expected, or even a full costume. So the Joe that we have here today, I wanted to ask you, what is a costume, a disguise, that has a special memory for you? Well, when my little boy, Eric, was about yay high, we dressed him up as a, as a kernel of candy corn. <laughs> for, Chris, for, for Christmas, right, for <laughs> Halloween. So I, I, I made, it, made this outfit that was kind of shaped like this, a little white on the top, a little yellow under, on, underneath, and then the rest was all orange down to his feet. We put this on, we cut some holes for his eyes. He was able to see, but nobody could tell who he was. He was transformed from Eric to a kernel of candy corn. 
So are the question for you, boys and girls, to think about and to talk about at home or maybe your upcoming Halloween costumes, maybe the one you're going to be this year if you're going to, to get dressed up, or something that you've been in the past that was a favorite costume, or something you've seen somebody else wear that was a really cool costume. So that's part of the story here today is that the brothers don't recognize Joseph. That's something that they can see. But the other part here is the trick that Joseph plays to see if his brothers have been transformed. And they have been. In the story, we see that the brothers are no longer full of anger and hatred. In fact, they're willing to give their lives for their other brother, Benjamin. And that's the good news, that they have now been transformed. So your sticker scene today that you get to take home for that conversation that you have at home or stick this on your refrigerator as a way to keep the story in mind is the part of the old story, part of what we already remembered, that the brothers took Joseph when they didn't like him, they didn't like his dreams, they didn't like the things he was saying, and they put him in a well. And so here we see the brothers, we even have a sticker of a well, and their faces are kind of sad. So to show that these brothers have been transformed, we have a second little set of stickers, smiley face stickers, shiny stickers. And you can even take these stickers as you want and stick them over the faces that look sad so that they now look happy. But let these stickers be a way to help you remember that God transformed their lives and God transforms ours today too. So our Joe is going to give you uh, the sticker scenes, but before you come up for them, let's say a prayer. And please repeat after me and congregation join in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For transforming our lives. For transforming our lives. And changing our hearts. And changing our hearts. To do your will. To do your will. Amen. So there's also a kids bulletin here that's green for the green season and it has the gospel lesson. If there's weeks of the Joseph stickers that you weren't here for, they're back. But I'll give these to Miss Jo Ann and I will have the transformation sticker. So you'll need to come to both of us today to get what you, what you need to take back. If you didn't come up today, I've got lots of extras you can take after church as well.